Welcome to my unboxing of my new camera. And I call this my new camera because, uh, not because other people won't be allowed to use it, but because they don't want to. I'm the only one who works here who actually cares that we just got ourselves a Canon XA20. So the XA20 is the upgrade from the XA10. The, the old, formerly only camera that we really had that was better than like a pocket point and shoot. So it comes with a massive user manual, which I think most people probably won't look at, as well as a data import utility. But quite frankly, if you're using like Canon's included, you know, Zoom browser equivalent or whatever it is that they have these days, you should probably just go find a new line of work. Um, so let's just put all of that aside and have a look at all the goodies that are included inside the box of the XA20. So in front of us, we have the fairly large accessory package that comes with the XA20. First is a full four pole adapter to composite video out as well as left and right audio. Next, we've got an AC power cable that goes with the DC brick right there that we can use to power the camera for longer shoots in the studio, for example. This is an interesting inclusion. So they now include an HDMI to mini HDMI cable, which is great because it has a mini HDMI output. I really wish they would have upgraded that to full HDMI. It includes one of their new, even more intelligent batteries. And I'm gonna take a moment to kind of rant about this because um, you can't use XA10 compatible batteries with the XA20. Canon has basically implemented a system whereby if you install an older battery into the newer camera, it'll say, oh, sorry, uh, it powers on, right? And shows you an image. Oh, sorry, this battery is not compatible with this camera. And it just turns off Canon. Dick move, you guys, dick move. Uh, because being able to reuse your older batteries and upgrade your equipment is a very good thing and it could have just said, hey, look, the, uh, the, the, the level readings aren't going to be accurate with this older type of battery, but instead you just had it turn off. Um, so currently there aren't any cheap third-party alternatives to the Canon batteries, which are like a hundred bucks for an extended battery. So once again, dick move, Canon. Uh, they've got one of those uh, magnetic sort of, or iron or whatever they are. Anyway, the theory is they reduce interference on cables. Uh, in practice, I suspect your USB cable doesn't care. If you install one of those. They've also got a USB A to mini B cable for pulling data directly off the camera, but that's not your only option. More on that in a moment. A lens hood, which is really cool because it's got this little flip out doodad right here that allows you to, instead of installing a lens cap, just have a flip of the switch protected or ready to rock sort of functionality, which I think is fantastic. They include a shotgun mic uh, shock mount. However, it's really nothing special. That's very hard rubber as well as a couple of screws to install it. And finally, a remote that allows you to, well, remotely control the camera, but that's not your only option for that either. So, okay, things you have more than one option for. Data transfer, all of a sudden, boom, the XA20 has Wi-Fi. I'm gonna start pulling the camera out. Canon also almost got uh, great points for environmentally friendly packaging, but they did include a little bit of plastic. So it has Wi-Fi now, which supports data transfer even to an FTP, which is incredibly cool. So being able to just kind of go, look, here's my FTP login credentials, automatically throw all my footage on there. Absolutely huge thumbs up. You can also use Wi-Fi to control the camera using a smartphone, which is very cool as well. So you can adjust your focus or start and stop recording using a supported phone. It just says supported phones on their apps, but I'm gonna go ahead and try a couple of different devices with it over the next little while here. So that's in addition to the remote. Not only that, but it has a LAN C connector. So you can also use that to control it using supported, uh, using supported accessories as well. I haven't actually found it yet, but you can see I pulled out the box of the camera as well as the handle so we're going to take a much closer look at them once I go ahead and show you guys so that just slides into the shoe mount right there the two built-in screws at the back go here and I really don't recommend using the XA20 without the handle because it includes not only a handle for holding on to the camera, but also some pretty important functionality. So right here, it's got your control for your microphone. So you can either have phantom power or not have phantom power. You can switch the two different inputs on or off just like that. And then you can also switch to recording using the built-in stereo microphones here and here. But uh, I mean, they're okay. They're not great, but they're okay. And then next you have analog controls for the levels on those two XLR inputs that are on the other side over here. Last but not least, you get, ah yes, okay, so you get a pass through for that shoe mount, as well as start and stop. You can lock this off if you don't wanna accidentally press it, as well as zoom control. So it really is a great little accessory. It comes with the camera. You should pretty much always have it on there. So now we've got the camera geared up. It's time to take a quick 
tour of it. So first things first, this is what this looks like installed on the camera. It uh, <clears throat> quite effectively blocks out the light completely from being uh, <clears throat> transmitted. It's kind of a one or the other with the hood and the lens cap because you can actually see right here, even if I wanted to put the lens cap in, I wouldn't be able to. So I wouldn't imagine myself using the lens cap ever again, which means I'll probably lose it. So here, just guys remind me if I ever ask where it is, I put it in the box for the XA20 so that I wouldn't lose it. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look at controls to start with. So the menu, is much, much better than last time around. And the main reason for that is a couple small tweaks in layout for where you can uh, where you can change settings. And the biggest one is that it now features a capacitive touchscreen instead of a pressure sensitive touchscreen. So that makes scrolling through menus much, much easier compared to the previous gen product. You don't feel like you're like mashing on the screen in order to select anything or change a setting. Um, it's also just, you know, smoother to scroll through so that's that's more natural they've also moved around quite a few of the adjustments that you can make such as switching between autofocus and manual focus and part of the reason for this is that they've changed that the way the that the way you switch between manual mode and automatic mode so it used to be on the old camera the XA10 the power button when you when you turned it on you actually had to decide am I in auto mode or manual mode that's not the case anymore so now you've got off camera mode and media mode, which makes sense, is like how every other camera in the world works. The XA10 had a button here for playback and review, which is like random. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. Spend now it. there's just a switch for auto mode, manual mode, and cinema mode. So cinema mode we're not going to spend too much time on, because basically all it does is give you sort of some filters that you can put over top of your footage, which um, I mean, might help a little bit in post-processing. So filter one right here is a cinema standard. So it's just a bit of a flatter profile. So you can play around with color a little bit more in post. Vivid, you can actually see previews of these over to the right here. So we'll point at some stuff. So you can see Vivid is much more vivid. Uh, Dream just puts kind of a goofy looking vignette around things. And then there's a bunch of other filters that you can you can set up. Um, the next thing is layout of the buttons makes things a little bit easier for you as well. So the buttons are now user configurable. They have five programmable buttons, two over here to the left of the LCD, one on the inside right here, that's button number five, and then two more back here at the back of the camera. So the fact that you can reconfigure those to whatever you want is a huge, huge upside to this camera compared to the last gen product. Back are the dual SD card slots. So these support SD, X, C, A, and B, and they support a couple of cool modes, actually a few cool modes. So with the new Digic 4 video processor that's inside here, you can not only do what you could do on the previous product, which was you could record simultaneously to both cards so that you have an automatic backup, or you could record to one and then the other, and you could actually swap them out in the middle so you could record continuously. That's all supported. Now you can actually record in two different bit rates at the same time. So you can have low bit rate working files or web ready files, and then you can have full bit rate ones, one on one card and one on the other card, which is a very, very cool feature. It does have an infrared um, mode, just like the old camera did. Moving further around to the back, we've got a little toggle switch here that actually allows you to change the functionality of your focus wheel between focus and zoom, whatever you prefer. So if we go around to the front of the camera, that basically allows you to kind of go, okay, I want this to be focus, I want this to be zoom. In the menu, you can configure which way is which for both of them. And then there's also, aha, this right here is a dedicated button for gain. Now you used to be able to control that with the LCD screen, but you had to choose between gain and something else. Can't remember what it was anymore. It's been a long time since I've used the XA10 extensively, but now you have a dedicated wheel for that. So if you kind of go, okay, my focus ring is focus and it's, a, it's a, an infinite focus ring guys. So you don't, you're not gonna have like that muscle memory ability to focus, which is really unfortunate. I wish they had just made it linear. Um, anyway, so you've got your focus ring for focus. You can adjust gain on the fly right here, and then you can use the zoom rocker for zoom, which actually has a variety of different speeds that it can operate at. You can either have it be linear and you can select up to 16 different speeds, or you can press it harder for more and press it softer for less, uh, whichever you prefer. This gives you a much greater degree of flexibility while you're run and gun shooting compared to the previous camera. So why did we go with this versus something like a DSLR or a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera? 
camera or something along those lines, there's a couple of reasons. So that run and gun aspect of it, it makes it ideal for things like um, you know event coverage where you're not carrying around some bulky thing or external adapters, you just get one file at the end of it which might not be as flexible as what you might get out of a DSLR, it might not have that same cinematic look and shallow depth of field like a DSLR, it might not have the same uh, codec support as something like a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema, but what it is, is it's an all-in-one, the footage is ready to do something with it, whether it's upload directly to YouTube, uh, automatically wirelessly upload to your FTP, or whatever else the case may be. The sensor is slightly bigger than the older XA10, so it's a 1 over 2.84 inch and it's a CMOS sensor so the older one was a one third inch CMOS sensor so it's slightly bigger and I think that that's pretty much all the justification. I mean, it's got other kind of cool stuff. It has a pre-record buffer, which is really neat, which means that when you have it configured, whenever you're rolling, it's actually capturing the last three seconds of footage, which means that if you're kind of like, you know, you're at little Johnny's thing and, oh, holy crap, they started the race a little bit early, boom, you press that button and you're actually going to get that previous three seconds, so you're not going to miss anything. Um, continuous autofocus is really nice. They've actually got a few different modes for it, so number one is you can can do like a facial detection uh, continuous autofocus, you can have medium speed autofocus which will look more natural or you can just have instant autofocus which is something that you would have to do manually on a DSLR although it's great to have that manual control but again it comes down to different strokes for different folks. This lens right here has a 35 millimeter equivalent zoom range that goes from 26.8 millimeters all the way up to 576 millimeters and the optical image stabilization coupled with some of the fancy image stabilization stabilization that Canon's doing with the Digic 4 processor actually looks pretty amazing. So check this out. We're going to go ahead, we're actually going to zoom in 20 times on my sweater over there. So I'm holding this like way out from my body. You can see a little bit of noise in the image just because that's very, very low light, but there's actually surprisingly not a ton of shake. You can see what an awkward position I'm in right there. And the fact that I can hold it that steady, zoomed in that close, is very, very impressive. There's a viewfinder, electronic viewfinder, right there that you pop out in order to enable it. There's the start, stop, record button here, so that's in addition to the one on the handle. There's, aha, this is great. So there's a little rocker here that gives you uh, push button support as well as directionality that you can use to navigate the menu if you prefer that to a touch screen, which some people do, as well as another button that's for navigating the menu over here. Over on the right, they have dramatically improved things here. So power in goes up here, which I actually don't think is better than the old one, which had power in at the bottom. And then there's also your AV out, but mostly you're not going to need that for anything. And look at this. This little, this little thing, nothing here. The old camera had like the micro or the mini HDMI out down there. So you actually couldn't handhold it and have HDMI out at the same time, which was ridiculous. Ridiculous. So what am I going to be using it for? I'm going to be using it for things like vlogging. If you guys saw any of our GPU 14 coverage where it was basically just like me hand camming things running around, that was all shot with the XA10, the older camera. It was a bit of a test case for it. Are people going to enjoy this content at all? How, how easy is it going to be for me to create when I have like a small uh, compact camera? How good is it going to look? So that's one of the reasons we invested in one of these uh, behind the scenes. Up until now, I've shot all of my behind the scenes footage on my HD. HTC One, and while people have commented that, you know, hey, it looks not bad, uh, particularly the sound is really, really terrible, you know, whenever it's windy or anything like that. So having a camera that actually has, you know, a, a reasonable quality shotgun mic on it, you know, shock mount with a wind sock, is going to dramatically improve the audio quality of behind the scenes footage. And because it's nice and compact, it's the kind of thing that we can actually carry around and, and like quickly shoot things with, much like you would be able to do with a phone. Um, it's for things like casual videos where the cinematography of it isn't really important. So if we were doing like, uh, you know, oh, hey, crap, we just found this like cool setting in this benchmark and we wanted to just do like a, a short little video about it. We could grab this, throw it in full auto mode, shoot a quick thing and upload it to the channel. Obviously, the quality of the footage is not going to be as good as what we can get out of the FS700, which is what this is being shot on. But 
I would like to at least give you guys a little demo of what you can expect out of it and that will run here at the end of the video. So guys, if you liked this video, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. If you have feelings that are more complicated than that or you really don't understand why I you know, wasted my money on this camera or you really think it was a great idea and you can't believe we ever bought anything else, please do leave a comment under the video. And if you wanna discuss it further, guys, there's always a link to the Linus Tech Tips forum below the video as well as a link for where you can buy one of these suckas if you wanted to do so. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.